Johnny Talk Sports in with the week five college football predictions. And what a week of college football we are in store for. We have got two top 10 matchups this week. We have got four top 25 matchups. It is going to be a terrific week of college football. Now, before I get to my week five college football predictions, I do want to go over my latest top 10. Now, I have it on a slide this time. That way you can see it. Because last week I just felt like I think it'd be better if the viewer can see it instead of hearing it from me. But here's my latest ranking. First game on tap, Michigan and Wisconsin. This is the biggest challenge that Michigan has faced so far this season. Going on the road to Camp Randall Stadium to take on Wisconsin. This Michigan offense is averaging just over 40 points per game. They are fourth in scoring defense. While Wisconsin, they're 55th in scoring defense. And Michigan... Their strength on offense so far is their running game, which they are fifth in rushing offense in college football. However, Wisconsin's strength is stopping the run as they are leading college football in run defense. So for Wisconsin to win this game, we know that Wisconsin is going to run. They're going to pound the rock. They're going to run the football as they are third in college football in time of possession. But this number right here, this is something that's got to improve if not only they want to win this game, but to be successful throughout the rest of the season. They are 126th in third down conversion percentage. And when you're playing a defense like Michigan, You've got to be successful on third down. 
You've got to be able to sustain drives. And I think Wisconsin's running game, I think they have the talent in their running back department to extend drives, even though they haven't been successful on that so far this season. But in the end, though, I think this is going to come down to which team is going to run the football the best. And we all know that Wisconsin is known for their running game. However, I just think that Michigan will win this game, but it's going to be a close one. I think it's going to be in the ballpark of, I'm going to say 24 to 17. I think that Wisconsin's defense will be able to keep them in it. But I just think Michigan will run the football just a little bit better in this game. So I will pick the Wolverines. Next game we have Indiana and Penn State, another Big Ten matchup. For Indiana to pull off this upset, they have got to assert the ground game. That is their best chance. And why is because in Penn State's two big wins of the season against Wisconsin and Auburn, Penn State gave up a total of 180 rushing yards to Wisconsin and 182 rushing yards against Auburn. And when you hear, a num hear numbers like that, that should be a note to run the football, pound the rock. And Indiana, they can still, I think this season is salvageable, even though they're not off to a good start. They are 2-2. Two and two. Maybe some would consider that they are one of the bigger disappointments in college football this season as far as expectations after their great season last year. Many thought that, including myself in the preseason, thought that Indiana could be that team in the Big Ten to potentially dethrone Ohio State. Because we saw how close they played Ohio State last year. If one or two things were different in that game, Indiana probably steals that one from them. So, the way I see this game, Indiana on third down defensively, this is going to be key because Penn State is 92nd in college football in third down conversions. You could also consider that this may be a trap game. I can understand your argument, but this isn't a trap game for Penn State. I know that we see a lot of these teams that are high up in the rankings and they play a big time opponent the next week they tend to come out a little flat maybe their minds are on that as well and they don't take this opponent as seriously as they would the opponent the next week but i can assure you that penn state has had this game circled on their calendar the entire season because penn state lost to indiana last year on that two-point conversion play in overtime. Because this was a game that they should have won last year, but Penn State beat themselves at the end. They allowed Indiana to go down and tie the game to force overtime. And ever since then, this game has been circled on Penn State's calendar. I think Penn State wins this game by at least 14 points. However, if Penn State were to actually lose this game, it wasn't them looking ahead to Iowa. It was them actually losing. But I will pick the Nittany Lions to win by at least 14. I think it's in the neighborhood of maybe 31-17. This is the first of two Big 12 showdowns that I will be predicting this week. Oklahoma and Kansas State. Now, Kansas State has upset Oklahoma the last two seasons in a row. And for the Sooners, this has to be the game where they find an identity on offense. Because their offense has not looked that great all season long. And with the way they've been playing so far this season, they're due for a loss at some point. Although, on the other hand, I do said that Notre Dame was due for a loss at some point within these next few weeks. 
and then they absolutely dominate Wisconsin in the fourth quarter. Now, Oklahoma has only won their three most competitive games. Yeah, that's right. I'm not even counting their, what was it, West Carolina game. That's more of a scrimmage. They didn't play anybody that week. Just a little scrimmage. They've won their three most competitive games so far this season against Tulane, against Nebraska, and against West Virginia by a combined total of 15 points. Now, for Kansas State to pull off the upset for the third consecutive year, they've got to force turnovers. They had four of them last year, including three Spencer Rattler interceptions in what was his first Big 12 competition. The running game will be key as well, even though Oklahoma is ninth in the FBS in run defense. Deuce Vaughn will be a key in this game for the Wildcats. They want to pull off another upset. And Kansas State is also 11th in run defense as well. So we've got a couple great run defenses in this matchup, which would be great to see. As much as I want to pick Kansas State to pull off this upset and how much I think Oklahoma's due for a loss, I'm going to pick the Sooners in this one, but I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if they lost this matchup. The reason why I am picking the Sooners is because Kansas State, they could possibly be down to third-string quarterback Jaron Lewis. Plus, Kansas State, they had a hard time stopping the run game against Oklahoma State last week. So Will Howard's status is in question for Kansas State. But if Will Howard is able to play on Saturday, then I think the Wildcats, they can pull off the upset. I don't know about Will, but they will come pretty close. But if they had to settle with Jaron Lewis at quarterback, I think the Sooners win by at least a touchdown, maybe 10. But Oakland hasn't proven they win by double digits yet this season. But I still think the Sooners win this game. Next matchup we have Baylor and Oklahoma State, a top 25 matchup. A couple of undefeated teams in the Big 12 Conference. And I do want to apologize. I have this slide incorrect. Oklahoma State is actually the home team in this matchup. It's going to be in Stillwater. So I do apologize for this error. For Oklahoma State, Spencer Sanders. He had a bounce back game last week against Kansas State. 22 for 34, 304, 344 passing yards and two touchdown passes. And Jalen Warren in his last two games, 341 total rushing yards. For Baylor, they are coming off of an upset win against Iowa State. So I think we are set up for a shootout in Stillwater. Baylor comes into this game sixth in rushing offense, averaging just under 272 rushing yards per game. Quarterback Jerry Bohannon is completing 73% of his passes, seven touchdown passes, and no interceptions yet, and also has four rushing touchdowns this season. The Bears are also 10th in scoring offense, scoring an average of just under 43 points per game. Their top two running backs, Abram Smith and Treston Ebner, both averaging more than seven yards per carry. And they're 19 in scoring defense, allowing just under 16 points per game. So the way I see this matchup, if Baylor gets their run, I think there's going to be a a battle of running games here. I know Spencer Sanders had a good performance last week against Kansas State. But I think this game is going to be decided in the running game. And I am going to go with the hot hand in Jalen Warren with 341 rushing yards in his last two games. I am going to go with Oklahoma State in this matchup, but I think it's going to be a shootout. I am going to say it's on the lines of 42 to 38. So I will pick the Cowboys to win this one. 
Next, we have Cincinnati and Notre Dame. Cincinnati had a bye week last week, so they had an extra week to prepare for this game. In what is going to be their biggest game of the season. And this would be a potential resume builder if the Bearcats can get the win. And for Notre Dame, head coach Brian Kelly coaching against his former team. A lot of storylines for Notre Dame football lately. Last week, we had quarterback Jack Cohn facing his former team in Wisconsin. And this week, we have head coach Brian Kelly coaching against his old team. So that will be a great storyline throughout the week. Now, last week, Jack Cohn did go down with an injury, but it doesn't appear serious. And if I had to guess, if I had to anticipate that he will play this week, if his injury wasn't serious. Now, Cincinnati is 12th in scoring defense. And I think that is important because Luke Fickle, he's going to have his defense ready in this matchup. And Heisman candidate in my mind, Desmond Ritter, I think he's going to have a solid performance in this one. But will it be enough? For Notre Dame to win this game, they've got to get the run game going as they are 122nd in college football in rushing offense. They're 67th in scoring defense. And third down is going to be a huge key in this game because both teams are towards the bottom in third down conversion percentage. Cincinnati is 84th and Notre Dame is 88th. So third down is going to be a huge difference maker in who is going to win this game. And I am going to give the edge to Notre Dame in this matchup. I think Notre Dame pulls off the upset in this game. I just think that Notre Dame is very confident after their win against Wisconsin. Even though Wisconsin, they were in that game, they were up 13 to 10. Notre Dame was dominant when it mattered. It was just like Cincinnati over Indiana. They weren't the better team in the first three quarters of the game, but they were dominant when it mattered, and that was the fourth quarter. And I'm going to pick the Irish to pull off the upset. Next, we have Ole Miss and Alabama. What a showdown we have in Tuscaloosa. In my opinion, this is a top 10 matchup, as I have Ole Miss at number 10 in my current rankings. Now, the winner of this game is going to be decided on a few different things. One is staying disciplined. Who is going to be the more disciplined team in this matchup? Because these two teams have both accumulated a total of 35 penalties apiece, which is 121st in college football as far as fewest amount of penalties Matt Corral and Bryce Young, the top two Heisman favorites, according to a lot of people. That seems to be those are the two favorites from the Heisman at this point, and whoever wins this game is going to turn into the favorite to win the Heisman Trophy. Matt Corral has played clean football this year for Ole Miss. Nine touchdown passes, zero interceptions. Bryce Young has looked really solid so far for the Crimson Tide as he is leading Alabama's fourth best scoring offense in college football, averaging 46.5 points per game. Ole Miss is leading the country in scoring offense, scoring an average of 52.7 points per game. And Ole Miss is also fourth in rushing offense. And running backs Jerrion Early and Henry Parrish are going to be key for this upset bid because Alabama allowed, an, allowed, allowed a total of 246 rushing yards against the Florida Gators a couple weeks ago. And for Ole Miss to win this game, they are going to have to win on first and second down. Because Alabama is ninth in college football in third down percentage. They've got to force Alabama into third and longs. Force them into third and 13. Force them into third and 17. Force them into third and forever. And when Alabama, if they, because I think there's going to be a couple times where maybe Alabama, they're going to get maybe a holding penalty. 
that's going to result in a third and 17 or a third and 20. They've got to win on that down to get Alabama off the field. Now, the way I see this game, I think this is going to be a shootout just like last year because Old Miss was in that game last year for nearly st- from nearly start to finish until that onside kick took place that didn't work out. But that was an onside kick that I feel like had to be attempted, even though it didn't work out. I think that it's gonna, we're in for another shootout here as well. But I think it's going to be the same result. I still think Alabama wins. But if Ole Miss can get that running game going, I think Ole Miss has got a really good shot at pulling off this upset. But I think it's just hard to pick against Alabama. I mean, I know they had to grind it out against Florida a couple of weeks ago. But I think that was one of Alabama's games where they just had to survive in advance. And I think this could be the case as well. I think Alabama wins by only seven points. I think we're going to be in for high scoring game, even though Alabama, they do have some experience on defense returning from last year's national championship team. I still think Ole Miss will put up a significant amount of points on the board. I think Bama wins 45 to 42. I think Matt Corral makes his first mistake of the season at the most inopportune time and throws an interception with three minutes left, and Alabama is able to run the clock out. And finally, we have our game of the week, Arkansas and Georgia. Can the Razorbacks pull off another upset? They're coming off of an upset against Texas A&M last week, while Georgia is coming off of, well, a 62-0 scrimmage against Vanderbilt. For Arkansas to pull off this upset, they have got to be well in these two things. Because I think moving the football, as as good as Georgia's defense is, in fact, they are an elite defense. First in total defense in college football, allowing just under 182 yards per game. The best scoring defense in college football, allowing less than six points per game. Second in pass defense and sixth in run defense. Because Arkansas's offense is going to be the best offense that Georgia's defense has faced so far this season. And that is really something that I would that I would have been surprised if I was saying that in preseason going into this matchup. Because consider they played Clemson in their season opener. Clemson's offense this season has looked completely anemic. But drive sustainability is going to be key for the Razorbacks. Being 93rd in third down conversion percentage. They also have to have to stay disciplined. They have accumulated 36 total penalties this season, which is 124th in college football as far as fewest amount of penalties accumulated is concerned. Arkansas, however, they have quite the defense themselves. They are 12th in total defense, allowing an average of just over 265 yards per game. They are 8th in pass defense. They are 11th in scoring defense, allowing about 14.5 points per game. But Arkansas is 8th in rushing offense, and Arkansas quarterback KJ Jefferson, he did go down against Texas A&M with an injury and Malik Hornsby had to come in for a little bit, but he did return to that matchup. So I do anticipate KJ Jefferson will be playing in this game. He's going to be at his best. He's at least going to give it hundred percent. And I think that Arkansas, I mean, there's a chance they can pull off this upset. I think they're going to be in this game from start to finish. However, despite what I've seen from KJ Jefferson so far this season, I just think the Bulldogs, they have the quarterback they need to finally get over the hump and win a national championship. I think JT Daniels, I think he is the answer for the Bulldogs. I think he has been that missing piece 
that Georgia has been needing. I mean, it's been, they've gone through Stetson Bennett. They've gone through Jake Fromm. They've gone through Aaron Murray. They've gone through Matthew Stafford. But I think JT Daniels, I think this is the quarterback that Georgia has been looking for. And I think it will come down to quarterback play, and I will give the small edge to JT Daniels. So I'm going to pick Georgia to win this game, but it's going to be a close one. I think it's going to be 27-20 Bulldogs. And that will do it for my Week 5 college football predictions. Like, share, and subscribe. If there is a game that I did not predict this week, and you want me to make a prediction on it, leave it in the comment section down below, and I will respond to you. That is all I have. Until next time, have a great day.